In 1973, a select team of astronomers from various countries used the prototype Concorde aircraft to their advantage in their quest to witness a long solar eclipse. We delve into the remarkable tale of a group of researchers who endeavored to observe a solar eclipse from the unique perspective of the fastest commercial airplane ever built. To understand the significance of scientists chasing a solar eclipse aboard Concorde, we must first appreciate the extraordinary characteristics of this iconic aircraft. Concorde holds a prominent place in the history of air travel and aerospace engineering. Developed and manufactured jointly by British Aerospace and, and Aerospatial, this supersonic jet revolutionized the concept of commercial flying. Besides its delta wing shape, the key feature that set the Concorde apart was its remarkable speed. Capable of cruising at speeds exceeding Mach 2, approximately 1,354 miles per hour, or 2,180 kilometers per hour, the Concorde was twice as fast as the speed of sound. It could whisk passengers across the Atlantic Ocean in just under three and a half hours, dramatically reducing time compared to conventional subsonic aircraft. In addition to its impressive speed, Concorde was renowned for its ability to fly at altitudes of around 60,000 feet. Operating at such heights offered several advantages. Firstly, it allowed the Concorde to fly above most weather systems, minimizing turbulence and ensuring a smoother ride for passengers. Secondly, the higher altitude reduced air resistance, resulting in fuel efficiency and enabling the aircraft to maintain supersonic speeds for longer durations. Secondly, flying at such heights granted passengers a unique perspective of the Earth and the sky. They could witness the curvature of the planet and experience breathtaking views of the celestial sphere. In the context of chasing a solar eclipse, the Concorde's speed and altitude capabilities played a pivotal role. These attributes allowed researchers to access unique perspectives of the eclipse and observe it from a vantage point beyond conventional aircraft's reach. According to Weiss, in May 1972, slightly more than one year before the celestial event, Pierre Lena, an astronomer from the Paris Observatory, presented his proposal to André Turcotte, a French test pilot. Turcotte was highly impressed with the idea and presented it to his superiors at Aerospatiale, who provisionally approved it and agreed to cover the mission's expenses. The idea of observing a solar eclipse from Concorde was born from a collaboration between astronomers and aviation enthusiasts. It was a bold plan to leverage the capabilities of Concorde to chase the shadow of a solar eclipse across the Earth's surface, thereby extending the duration of its totality and maximizing scientific observations. The first challenge was pinpointing an upcoming solar eclipse and calculating its path and timing accurately. These researchers conducted astronomical calculations to determine the trajectory of the moon's shadow during the eclipse, taking into account the Concorde's speed, altitude, and flight capabilities. Lena and Turcotte performed extensive simulation and a couple of test flights to fine-tune the logistics and ensure the mission's feasibility. Meanwhile, at the Astrophysics Department at Queen Mary College London University, Dr. John Beckman and other researchers were keen on making far infrared observations of the eclipse to learn about the sun. He put two and two together and came up with the answer, Concord, recalls Jim LeCerf, ex-QMC student. LeCerf had spent some months developing and testing at QMC and flew to Aerospatiale's facilities in Toulouse at the start of May 1973. The QMC research team, Lena, LeCerf, Jim Hall, John Beckman, and Tony Marston collaborated closely with Concorde pilots and navigators, sharing their expertise in celestial mechanics and eclipse predictions. QMC wasn't the only research team using 001 at the time. There were also researchers from Los Alamos in the U.S., two groups from France, and one from Aberdeen University. In addition, there was already an ongoing project run by Dr. Jim Birch of the UK National Physical Laboratory. Together, they worked to synchronize Concorde's flight trajectory with the path of the eclipse, aiming for a perfect interception that would provide an optimal viewing and research experience. The planning also extended to the selection and preparation of the astronomer who would embark on the expedition. 
the chosen astronomer would need to have scientific knowledge and observational skills required to study a solar eclipse and the adaptability to work in the unique environment of a supersonic jet. In February 1973, with only four months remaining until the eclipse, the mission was approved. The researchers hurriedly embarked on the final preparations. Finally, on June 30, 1973, Concord 001 took off in pursuit of the solar eclipse, marking the culmination of months of planning and preparation. With its crew and the chosen astronomer on board, at precisely 10.08 a.m. on the morning of June 30th, the four twin-spooled Olympics 593 engines beneath the sweeping delta wings of the Concorde were ignited, propelling 001 down the runway of Grand Canaria Airport. The successful execution of the mission depended on the precise navigation and timing. As Concorde raced along its calculated flight path, the moment of the interception approached. Traveling together at almost the same speed, Concorde would race the solar eclipse across the surface of the planet by swooping down from the north and intercepting the shadow of the moon over northwest Africa. The astronomers and the entire crew anxiously awaited the announcement of totality. And then, in a remarkable display of precision and engineering, Concorde entered the eclipse's shadow, plunging the aircraft into ethereal darkness. As Turcotte kept 001 on its planned course, the astronomers witnessed the extraordinary phenomenon of totality from four special portholes. The darkened skies revealed the sun's corona, a delicate and shimmering crown surrounding the hidden solar disk. The scientific observations in Concorde could have continued, but the team had to prepare for the upcoming landing in Chad. Each group concluded their observations and took a few moments to appreciate the unique sight of the Sahara Sands. In total, the researchers were able to witness the complete eclipse for an unprecedented duration of 74 minutes. During a single flight, Concorde provided astronomers with more time to observe the eclipse than all the expeditions conducted in the previous century combined. Concorde's pursuit of a solar eclipse left a lasting legacy and had a significant scientific impact. This extraordinary endeavor not only pushed the boundaries of aviation, but also provided invaluable opportunities for astronomical research and deepened our understanding of the sun's behavior and structure. One of the key scientific contributions of the Concorde Solar Eclipse Chase was the extended duration of totality. By intercepting the eclipse's shadow and continuously flying within it, the astronomer aboard the Concorde gained precious extra minutes of observing time during the event. This extended period of totality allowed for more detailed and comprehensive scientific observations of the sun's corona, magnetic fields, and other phenomena that occur during eclipses. The data collected during the chase contributed to advancements in solar physics and provided valuable insights into the intricate workings of our nearest star. Moreover, Concorde's unique vantage point offered an unattainable perspective from the ground or conventional aircraft. Flying at an altitude of around 60,000 feet above much of Earth's atmospheric interference provided a clear and unobstructed view of the eclipse. This unfiltered view allowed for detailed observations of the corona and other solar features, free from the distortions caused by Earth's atmosphere. The collaboration between astronomers and the Concorde highlighted the potential for future astronomical research and exploration from high-altitude platforms. The success of the mission demonstrated the feasibility and benefits of using advanced aircraft to conduct scientific observations in the upper atmosphere. It opened up new avenues for studying not only solar eclipses, but also other celestial events and phenomena that unique capabilities of high-altitude platforms could enhance. During the 1999 solar eclipse over Europe, three Concords, one from France, two from Britain, briefly pursued the moon's shadow. However, the passengers on board were tourists. Concorde's chase of a solar eclipse was a testament to human ingenuity, collaboration, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. This extraordinary endeavor not only pushed the boundaries of aviation, but also deepened our understanding of the sun and its celestial dance. By extending the duration of totality and providing a unique vantage point, Concorde enabled valuable scientific observations and contributed to advancements in solar physics. Although the Concorde is no longer operational, 
Its solar eclipse chase serves as a reminder of the remarkable achievements that can arise from collaboration between different disciplines and the relentless pursuit of pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. The Concorde Solar Eclipse Chase demonstrated the power of combining cutting-edge technology, scientific expertise, and the inherent curiosity of the human spirit to unlock the secrets of the universe.